This season, we're taking things up a notch by bringing 18 castaways here onto the great mountains of Hokkaido. They'll be split into two tribes, one full of first-time players and another full of second-time players. Let's start with the first-time players, the Naegi tribe. Pigeon. I like his energy, he's very upbeat and is into theater. He actually sang his audition for casting. He's also a new face in the community which might help him since he won't be tied down to preconceived notions people might have in this community of him, and I think people will view him as a good presence to have at camp and will want to work with him, hopefully not getting annoyed by his enthusiasm. I definitely feel like I bring a sort of spirit and energy to basically everything I do. I have, it's really hard for me to like tone things down, so I might be a little bit uh, crazy, I suppose. But also I feel like me being an entertainer is definitely something that uh, not a lot of people can say they do. Luigi. He's a very passionate person in whatever he does from his real life career as a video editor to even how he applied for this show. He always put in the extra effort in whatever he sets his mind to. He even came into his casting interview in a full suit. He'll definitely be playing hard and passionately and what I hope to be in a subtle way. As a freelance graphic designer, I have to deal with a lot of high pressure situations. So I sort of need to constantly adapt to make sure I'm in the correct position in order to, well, <laughs> have a successful day. Swamp. I like that he's introverted but can still express what he's feeling at any moment. He is introverted, detail oriented, and is really smart since he's in the 100 percentile for IQ. And it'll be interesting to see if his serious analytical side will do him any favors in this game. Hey, I'm Swamp. I have a genius IQ level. I do math for fun. I do robotics. And in my real life, I excel in everything when it comes to being intelligent. And I use that intelligence in my real life to get things that I want and get, get my way. And I will be planning to do this in my game. For a 13-year-old, he knows himself quite well and I'd like to see how far this young gun can go in this game. He relates to Jackal with being chill until, quote, bitches come for me, end quote. He wants to break that young, obnoxious, 13 to 14 year old stereotype in these games. My one worry for him is will he talk a lot? And would that potentially annoy the older crowd? Let's hope they give him a chance. I am a young black African American male and they see me as less intelligent and they see me as all these things. So I've never gotten anything in my life easy. I've always had to work hard to win this game. I can take whatever is given to me and make a whole lot out of a whole lot of nothing. Nerf. He's gone through a lot of life experiences to get where he is now, and I think that makes him very mature and someone to look out for in this game. He lived a very sheltered life early on in Baltimore, so he's trying to grab life by the horns now and dabble in as many things like music production and MMA fighting, all while balancing a tough law program at the age of 18 to become a lawyer. You've got to have some brains if you want to become a lawyer, so I think he seems smart and social, and as long as he chooses his words wisely, I think he'll be in it for the long run. Hello everybody, my name is Nerf. I'm 18 years old and I'm a law and psychology student for the Magnet program. I had a bit of a long time getting into that and for most of my high school days I've been learning about law and psychology and I think that's going to really help me in the game of Survivor. I can understand people very well with my psychology st skills and be able to use that to my advantage. I not only want to use it for the game of Survivor but also just to get to know people in general. Creed. With over 7,000 followers on Twitch and about 550,000 on TikTok, Creed's made quite the presence online. But behind those numbers, once you get to know Creed, it makes sense why he has the success that he does. People want to genuinely be around this guy. He's a kind person who listens to his viewers on stream and knows how to make other people around him feel good, and he doesn't let that success get to his head. My hope for Creed is that he'll be able to smooth talk his way into the tribe and develop relationships that will make people say, hey, I want to keep this chill guy around. I do have a, uh, a kind of like a medium sized, larger following in terms of making content. You know what, I'm gonna try and lay low in the bit, but I'm definitely gonna use my um, experience just dealing with strangers on the internet to just kind of really meet people and just kind of form connections. You know, I'll just do my best, so I'll give it 110%. Amber. It's been a while since we've had a female make it far into the show, and I'm hoping Amber will be the one to break that trend this season. She's very optimistic, bubbly, and social, and she actually thrives in situations with lots of guys, since that's what she was used to growing up. So I could see Amber making a run in this game since this game is mostly made up of guys. What she has working against her are the stereotypes of female gamers being quiet, 
not assertive in Minecraft Survivor, and flopping at challenges. But I think she can break those stereotypes as long as she doesn't cost her try the challenge, since her mature age of 22 has given her the emotional intelligence to navigate this game. Pretty sociable person. I think I can bridge gaps between people pretty well. I also think that I make people pretty comfortable with everything anyway, so my ability to socialize will help me in my strategy. Maddie. She's lived a lot through her life with being a young Filipino transgender girl. She used to be a social pariah early in her high school years, but she became a social butterfly after coming out as trans and found a passion with theater in high school. A third of her life has been spent watching Minecraft Survivor, and this is her fifth time applying, so I'd like to see if her viewing experience will shape the type of game she'll play. My worry for Maddie is if she'll play too loyal of a game, that she won't be able to differentiate her moves from her allies at the end, and make it hard for her to convince a jury to vote for her at Final Tribal Council. Uh, I'm an aspiring actress, and I'm a proud transgender woman. You don't see many people like me succeed, and I plan to change that. I've had to face so many hardships and obstacles in my life, so if there's anybody out here that's qualified to win the game, it's me. Jonas. If we needed a representative from the community that has been built around Minecraft Survivor after its five years of airing, it would be Jonas. He takes the game very seriously and is clearly passionate about Minecraft Survivor and the community around it. One thing I could see getting in Jonas's way is his arrogance, because he knows some people might view him as cocky, but I don't think Jonas will do anything to reel it back and talk less, because he'll say it's his passion doing the talking. He's very vocal, and sometimes in this game, the most vocal people get pegged as leaders and get targeted early on, especially in the early merge. If Jonas gets booted somewhere early on or early at merge, expect a 30-page dissertation on why Minecraft Survivor is broken. Throughout the past six years of my life, I'd say, I've been playing um, Minecraft and involved in different communities. And uh, for the past two, I've played probably over a total of 200 um, to 250 Minecraft Survivors. Do whatever it fucking takes to win at this point. I don't care if they know me as NKS. Don't care if they know me as Schmeckle Boy. Don't care if they know me as Jonas. I want to be known as the winner of Minecraft Survivor Season 9. Alright, that basically covers everything about the new players for Minecraft Survivor Hokkaido, but what about the returnees? That video will be up soon shortly.